<laughs> Let me go back to your help on the Nazarene Fund, which I find amazing. You have used your platform to do good and raise money every month, and you're sending the Nazarene Fund $5,000 every month, which I've known you for how long have we known each other? Well, I I come I, I meet you once and then I go yeah, away I for months and yeah. I meet you once and I've enjoyed it but for I, years. I, you introduce yourself every time and I think I say every time <laughs> I know who you are. And, well, you meet uh, so many people. I know and uh, and I found out somebody said to me last time we met, somebody said, "Do you realize what he's doing for the Nazarene Fund?" I said, "No idea." You never said a word about it. Well, because it's not me; it's our viewers. No, so I know. We crowd but, I, I mentioned we went to Iraq and we saw this terrible situation. Yeah. And so we raised some money, but it, it's a very low trust society. That's a I very know. friendly way of saying a corrupt place. Yes, yes. And the first three people we went to, we wanted to give it to a pharmacy. We wanted to give it to a charity. I could feel that it was going to be purloined, stolen. Uh -huh. In fact, we delivered some food on our first trip there and we were charged quadruple the price yeah. in the market. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's ripping you off. And I had, I mean... In the end, I found the Nazarene Fund, and I did my due diligence. I read your uh, IRS filings. Yeah, I yeah. read as much as I could. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it was ironic. I was going overseas to find a place to trust. It was actually here in North America that yeah. I found the one charity I trust not to waste Thank the money, you. not to pocket the money. And so we just baby steps, started giving, started yeah. giving. And I wanted to keep it low key. And then we sent one of our reporters over there in November, just to see with her own eyes, what are you guys doing on the ground? And she put together a bunch of videos. Oh, I don't think I've even seen these. Well, uh, we, we have them up on our website, okay. uh, rebelnews.com. Okay. In fact, we just them. strung them all together. Okay. About 45 minutes worth of video. Wow. Just one of our reporters on her own with a selfie stick and a cell yeah, phone yeah. spent uh, two or three days with your guys uh -huh. watching the families being taken in. It's amazing. And so we made it our Christmas drive. Our reporter went there in November, and in December we said to our viewers, hey, let's chip in, let's make this our Christmas drive. And so I have here a check um, oh from our gosh. viewers. Uh, now it's in Canadian mini bucks, so it's, uh, it's slightly... So it's <laughs> about a third of flesh. <laughs> it's not that bad. But I'm uh, delighted to give you a check for $30,907 from cow. viewers Thank of Rebel you. News. Our reporter, Sheila Gunn-Reed, went there, Check you guys out. I'll be honest. I said, check them out. Make sure they're doing oh, yeah. what they say they're doing. Yeah. We want you to. And Sheila, I said, be skeptical because, you know, we're giving yeah, some it's dough. Funny. Sheila came back and she said, these are the best guys doing work in extremely difficult yeah. circumstances. And I thought, well, I, I'm well, in. Well, thank you. So we, there's almost 31 grand there and we'll continue our monthly support. And uh, it's because we trust you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Let me just say this. Simon Wies, uh, Wiesenthal Center came to me um, uh, about five years ago and said, could you please stop talking about the coming persecution of the Jews? And I said, what? what? Hmm. And uh, he said, for this reason, I have to convince Jews to help the Christians because, mark my words, they're coming for you first hmm. this time. They'll get to us. Hmm. But I've got to get the Jews to pay attention to the beginning, and this time they're coming for you first. Uh, and it was shortly after that that we we saw the beginning of ISIS. And so you were you as a, a, a Jew standing up for the Christians is just so great. Well, thank you. Most of our viewers are, are, are Christian. But I know, I'm, but, but, but you... Thank you. But you care. Well, I mean, I, I've been to the Holocaust Memorial in Israel, mm -hmm. and there's a concept called the righteous Gentile. Yes. Someone like Oscar Schindler, uh -huh. who had great personal risk, would save Jews for yeah. no other reason than it's right. He, did, right. he wasn't a Jew himself. And I thought, surely it's time for all of us to be righteous, righteous. towards... And these are the most ancient Christians in the world. They still pray in Aramaic. That's the mm -hmm. language Jesus prayed in. Mm -hmm. And... And it sounds very much like Hebrew. I went to Hebrew school mm -hmm. so I could understand. I thought, oh, my God, look at this. You could see, you mm -hmm. know, what Pope John Paul called our, the Jews are our older brothers. And I thought, oh, look yeah. at that. They're praying in a language so close to Hebrew. And they've been there for 1,400 years in some of these towns. And then, like the Holocaust would wipe out an entire Jewish town and just make it a rumor. Gone, yeah. That's how it is in the Nineveh Plains. Yes. And I'm of the belief 
that the only safe future for many of these people is to leave. And that's so hard to say, but they don't have enough of contiguous territory to be protected. Right. It's a little village here and a little town there. It's not like Israel that at least has borders that they can defend. But it's defend. so amazing how they won't because they're like, we can't leave this. They're, it's, their it, roots this, are in the land. It's their right. land. And and it's they're, they're the ones protecting this holy site that the yeah. apostles were on. Yeah. And they're like, we can't leave it. They'll destroy everything. And... Part of me says stay and fight, but another part of me looks around, and yeah, I ISIS is gone. There's a new militia called Hasht al-Shabi. It's mm. an Iranian, ba- and it's never ending. No. I truly believe that the Nazarene Fund has the right balance, and part of that is getting them out of there yeah, no. just to live on. Well, so, Canada's, Canada's not really been a part of that. You'll take in, every, you'll take in everybody from everywhere, but... Trudeau put a limit on Christians, didn't he? Yeah, the previous prime minister, Stephen Harper, had a special track for Christian refugees of persecution. It was amazing. Trudeau, one of his first acts was to stop that. Why would you stop that? I mean, we want the lambs, not the wolves. Trudeau will bring in the wolves from these places. Some of the largest sources of immigration in Canada are uh, Muslim countries, and that's that fine. can be fine, but can we please sort the wolves from the lambs. It would be as if in the 30s and 40s, the West was taking Germans, but didn't sort the Nazis from the Jews. Yes. Can we take the lambs, please? Yes. I'm happy to take the lambs from Iraq and Iran and Egypt, where they're right. being persecuted. And, right. and China, they're persecuting Christians. Can we sort? And China is persecuting Muslims. Yeah, the Uyghurs. Yeah. And anyway, it's incredible. I wish, uh, I mean, I, I love Samaritan's Purse, and I love the Nazarene Fund, and we're proud to be supporters. And Thank thanks for so letting much. me uh, you bet. hang Thank out you. with you today. Good to see you. Thank right you on. so much. You too. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.